All right. Hello and welcome to the Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am delighted to be joined by Wanda Allen, who is in Mississippi today. How are you doing, Wanda? Good, thank you. Excellent, and I'm here in San Diego as usual. Uh, and Wanda is an author and speaker and consultant. And what we're going to talk today about is follow-up strategies. How following up can uh, how how following up can help you close more sales. So so Wanda, let's uh, let's get going. And let me ask you. I mean, most people would say, "Yeah, I'm in sales. Of course, I follow up." But what what do you mean by follow up? Yeah. So most people do follow up maybe once or twice, mm -hmm. and that's about it. Uh, research tells us that 80% of sales are made between the fifth and 12th contact, but only 10% of people make three or more. So following up is it's just understanding prospects don't um, operate on our timeline or when we want them to. Only 2% of sales are made on the first contact, which tells us 98% of the time we have to follow up. And we have to follow up usually more than a few times. And that's where most people get stuck. They stop following up after one or two tries. Yeah. Well, I guess it's that uh, people get caught up in the idea, well, if they're not, if they're not responding to me, I need to just move on to my next opportunity, right? And that's, that's how a lot of people operate. Yeah, so when a prospect doesn't respond, then what typically happens is they will assume the prospect isn't interested. Mm -hmm. And so they move on. And what that looks like, if people are working so hard, generating leads, prospecting, networking, and they follow up once or twice, prospect doesn't respond, they drop it. Then they go out and get another one. Follow up once or twice, prospect doesn't respond, they drop it. They become the, the hamster on the wheel and they don't give their, their pipeline a chance to grow. So it's, it's, there's nothing good there. So to your point then, I mean, most people don't have probably a good set process on how to follow up or what follow up looks like, what a sustained follow up campaign looks like so can you talk through a little bit about from your perspective what that looks like yeah so first and foremost you have to use a crm mm -hmm. because that is like the mothership of all systems that that's what manages it for you having the reminder dates having the note section and it's not um using spiral pen and paper and mm -hmm. sticky notes and excel so many people still use excel i know and it just doesn't work. So that, that's the first thing is you've got to get a CRM and you have to use it because that's what's going to manage everything that you need to do. So when you're operating without a CRM, I call it you're slipping and sliding throughout mm -hmm. the day. When you, when you have a CRM in place, it, it puts you on firm ground and you're just a lot more effective. Yeah. So, it's kind of it's kind of like trying to run I mean nowadays it's kind of like trying to run your company without any bookkeeping software right yes. I mean you yeah. couldn't do it uh, and yeah. where and why you think you can run your your sales and revenue generating activities without a CRM is kind of beyond me Yeah and what you know so many people use uh, like a spiral notebook mm -hmm. on their debt you know write notes down and, and trying to find something you wrote 3 weeks ago and there's so many people, this notebook is worth millions of dollars. Right. If they ever lost it. So I call it, it's just being, it's, it's living so dangerously and it's mm -hmm. not safeguarding your business. Mm -hmm. You know, we have insurance and we do all these things to protect our assets and what we own and have. And then when it comes to our business, or even if you work for somebody, bring in and sales, it's just so loose. And it's not good. <laughs> yeah. So, so, okay. So if you have a CRM system in place and we'd highly encourage you to look at Pipeliner, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the, uh, what are some of the other steps of the process that you should have in place to make sure that you can, you can be in that, uh, um, you can hit that 20% of sales or the 80% of sales rather that are made between the fifth and 12th contact. Okay. So you have to have a solid foundation and the three pillars of creating that solid, fo solid follow-up foundation is one, the CRM. The second thing is you've got to have the right mindset towards mm -hmm. getting your follow-up work done. And there's so much fear associated with following up, which is a big reason why people don't do it. 
And the three common fears are fear of being uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable work, but only in the beginning. It's like a muscle. The more you do it, the more developed you will get. Fear of being pushy. If I keep following up, I feel like I'm going to be pushy. And everyone has that pushy salesperson in, in the mind yeah. that they don't want to be. But what happens is they go so far to the opposite extreme that they do very, very little. And then, of course, the third big fear is, that, is the fear of no, being told no. And, mm -hmm. and you just have to understand that when you're uncomfortable, that's your opportunity to grow. Right. You're, not, you're not being pushy. You are showing, you're pursuing that prospect. You're showing an interest in them. So it's all in our mindset. How are you going to look at it? Yeah. And, then, and I was just going to say on that point, I always think it's, I, I always found it funny uh, is obviously because the, because people are so worried about the perception of salespeople and as being, as you said, pushy and used car salespeople and all this, that uh, some people go out of their way to create titles that have nothing to do with sales and all of this kind of thing and i always say that's fine you can do that if that if you think that that's a, a worthwhile exercise but at the end of the day your prospect knows you're a salesperson so why not be the best salesperson you can be as opposed to pretending that you're not a salesperson and trying to sell to them yes yes i love and sales is almost it's got such a negative connotation but mm -hmm. really what it is is you're servicing mm -hmm. that's what you're doing when you're selling because i believe that most people believe in what they sell, whether it's a product or a service, and believe they can make that prospect's life better in some way yeah. by using that product or service. And you can stand loud and proud and, and be confident in what you do and what you sell. And sell is not a bad word. It's, mm -hmm. it's not. So that's the second pillar is the mindset because we create so many issues with our own mind before we even give ourselves a chance. So the mindset has to be right. And then the third pillar is you've got to make follow up a daily priority. And people, they um, spend their time on busy work or comfortable work. And they don't get the important work done. And, and follow up is important work. That's what's going to build the business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I always put a challenge out there for the next 30 days, do the important, your important work first before you do anything else. And that will change your business. Yeah. And, and I think the other part, too, is, uh, you know, people would say, oh, I'm so busy. I, I didn't get a chance today to do the follow up. And then you go, yeah, but really, if you were to really do an analysis of all the things you did today and all the things that you gave attention to, how many of those things were actually unwork related? How many of them were just distractions? How many of them were low priority things, as you say? So you do have the time. You just have to prioritize it. You have to. And so uh, the number one reason why people tell me they can't get their follow-up work done is because they don't have the time. They're mm -hmm. just busy. I've heard it a million times and I never, ever believe it. Yeah. Because the first question I would ask them would say, did you check the news today? Yeah. Yeah. Did you check your sports team today? Did you yeah. check your Instagram, your Facebook, uh, whatever? Did you answer those texts from people who have nothing to do with work that you could probably have answered later today? No, you didn't. You see, you do have time. Yeah, and even in a time management experts say today that the, the worst way you can start your day is by checking your email, getting mm -hmm. into your email. You can peruse it to see if there's any income producing emails, but what happens is people, that's how they start their day and they go down this deep hole and they'll resurface an hour, if not longer, later, and, mm -hmm. have, and most of that time has been low priority. Yeah. So what, what people are doing is they're filling their days with low priority work. And that's what's creating the stress. They're, they're, so they have a lot of mental baggage because mm -hmm. they're not getting that important, uncomfortable work done. And they're sta spending their days on busy, comfortable work. Exactly. So, I ask, so what I, I always put this challenge out, don't ever say again, I didn't get that done because I didn't have the time. What I want you to say is, I didn't get that done because I didn't make it a high enough priority. Yeah. So I just beg people, please stop blaming time. Get mm -hmm. out of the blame game. Unless you're expecting a big life change that's going to give you a vastly bigger amount of time, your time's not going to change. Our life is generally the same. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you say, oh, oh, today's not a good day. I'll do that on Friday. And then Friday comes and goes. You know why? Because time really doesn't change. Sure. And I'm not saying... We don't have times we're a little slower than others, sure. but 
overall, generally speaking, it's not going to change. Get out of the blame game. And when you say I didn't make a high enough priority, you have control over that. When we blame time, it's kind of like out of our hands. Yeah. It's out yeah. there somewhere. <laughs> and um, yeah. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. I think we're great at that. And as you say, we're there are a lot of factors outside of our control, but where we choose to invest our time is 100% in our control. And, and one of the other things you mentioned earlier, mindset, mindset's 100% in our control. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, I say, oh, I could teach you all these great systems because I'm all about systems. Um, but if your foundation isn't set, it's not, you're not going to be able to sustain the systems. You know, it's like building that house on a shaky foundation. So the, the, again, the, the foundation are the three pillars. You gotta have the right mindset. You have to use the CRM and you've gotta make follow the daily priority. Mm -hmm. And you have to have all three. Right. You know, it's like a three-legged bar stool. If one is missing, how well is that stool gonna work? And the foundation is the same. Mm -hmm. So um, it doesn't matter how long somebody's been in sales, how long they've been in their industry, you have to, and it's very basic, but the problem with today is life is so crazy and complicated. We're losing sight of the basics and the fundamentals. And I think also because we live in this, uh, we live in this instant gratification, yeah. shortcut culture uh, that people almost expect. It's like, well, I've tried a couple of times now and Wanda hasn't shown any interest. So therefore, I'm just going to move on because I don't have time, I don't have time to deal with this. You know? and, and the idea that you can just keep moving on to the next thing and the next thing. And obviously, there are times for you to move on. But I think in some ways, we're allowing this pervasive culture of impatience to, as we're using it as a get out of jail card for not doing the hard work. Yes. Yeah. And it's... Um life has become a sprint mm -hmm. and people are sprinting through everything and and business it, it's a marathon it, you know if somebody says oh, i don't have time to follow up with somebody five or six times well then i say do you plan on being in the same business six months from now or a year from now well mm -hmm. yeah well then you, of course you have the time because a big part of your job is bringing business in and bringing sales in that it's our, our thinking has gotten so messed up uh, because of this immediate gratification and I'm in a hurry, I'm busy, I gotta go, I don't have time. And that becomes habitual mm -hmm. without even any forethought. It, it can become, become who you are and the way you are and it's not gonna serve you well. Yeah. So we gotta slow it down and get back to the basics. And one of the things that you mentioned as well is about making it a daily work practice. And I think that's the whole idea of developing process, but also good habits and habits that you follow on a daily basis because it's very easy to take a, well, I'll see how today unfolds kind of approach as opposed to uh, being systematic about it. So I think uh, to your point, I think you have to have these things calendared in or you know, in your CRM with your reminders and set up your times. You have to have them calendared in so that you really do them because let's face it, if it's not on your calendar, you're going to find an excuse to forget about it. Yeah, and that's really powerful. You know, time blocking is a very powerful productivity strategy. Mm -hmm. When we're time blocked, we're far more likely to get it done and not let anything else in. And so, you know, I do suggest that block out a time every working day for your follow-up work. So it's like, you know, I say, I don't care how busy you are, how, how if you weren't feeling well, if you're in a bad mood, it doesn't matter. You would never go a day without checking your email, voicemail, or text message, mm -hmm. ever. And if you did, you would have a hard time sleeping that night. And that's where I want follow-up to be. If you went a day, and I'm talking working days, if you went a working day without following up, I want you tossing and turning, thinking, who did I not get back to that mm -hmm. I said I would? And um, have it be that ingrained in you that you can't sleep. And, and it's very, very possible because it's habits. That's mm -hmm. all it is. Mm -hmm. I, I work, I have a colleague and he's an international sales trainer and he says, he's worked with so many sales teams. The number one trait that the top salespeople have is they're good at follow-up. Mm -hmm. That's where, uh, it, you hear the fortunes in the follow-up, you know, we all have heard that. So wouldn't common sense just lead you there? 
For sure, yeah. Uh, and I think, I mean, a part of that is that, uh, I mean, as you say, I mean, people need to know how to follow up and, and different ways to follow up and all of that. And also just to accept the fact that, as you said, the, the, the prospects not operating on our time frame, they're operating on their own time frame, just like we are uh, uh, when we're on the other side of the table. Uh, so you have to, so it's really important that you create, you know, that you stay in touch, but you create value, you can create some reason for them to, to remember you that when they're ready, they will, they will connect with you. But I think that's the mistake that people often make. We may get excited about something and you may contact me as a salesperson and I'm excited about the product, but then something else at work behind the scenes comes and takes over as a priority and I'm not following up with you. And you're like, wow, John was really excited and now I'm not hearing from him. Well, I guess he mustn't care anymore, but it's not the point. The point is just something else took over as a priority and I will return to it. Yes. Yeah. And, and if that person stopped following up with you, you're going to go with somebody else. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Who happens to connect with me at the right time. And that's the other part is, uh, and that's why this, the follow-up is so important. Obviously your first 10 follow-ups with me may hit me at the wrong time, but the 11th one may hit me at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, people aren't going to remember us. It's up mm -hmm. to, uh, life's busy. You know, marketing research says you have to see a name nine times before you have automatic recall. Right. And it just pains me. People are working so hard today. Like I said, networking, prospecting, lead generation, but they fall so short on the back end, which is following up. They, they're not experiencing near the fruits of all that labor they're putting out there. Mm -hmm. And it ends up being a waste of time, energy, and money. And that's what it takes to, for lead generation. Yeah, no, I couldn't have said it better myself. And I just think this is a, such an important, an important topic, the idea of follow up. Because like I said, I think we're becoming so conditioned to being um, so short term in our thinking that uh, putting in processes that may not bear fruit for, for months or sometimes years, it depends on the type of sale that you're in, is kind of going counter to the pervasive culture. Yeah. Yeah, and what I really want your listeners to understand is that not following up is actually unprofessional. Mm -hmm. It really is. So thesaurus um, says that the synonym, which means the same thing, to follow up is pursuing and showing interest. Right. The antonym, which is the opposite, means dodging, avoiding, and forgetting. So mm -hmm. how do you want to be perceived? Is that person, you know, if you start feeling pushy, just remind yourself that you're a professional salesperson who respectfully shows your prospects that you're interested. Yeah. That's what you are. Exactly. And, yeah. And if they don't, and if that, and it, if that person hasn't explicitly said, listen, I never want to hear from or see you ever again, then it's not over. Right? Yeah. yeah. And even if they do say that, you know, the, that's not always, they don't always mean that either. But, but to, the, to your point though, uh, it's showing interest and, 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 I think, and I think at the end of the day, we, in some ways, we, we have a high regard for persistent people, right? They leave an impression. Mm -hmm. It leaves an impression on us. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, if, if you're, you're interested and you have two people, one followed up with you twice and never heard from them again, and the other <laughs> one's periodically staying in touch following up, Who's going to get the business and who are you more impressed with? Exactly. So it, you leave a great professional impression when, what I call stay in the game. You yeah. don't drop out after one or two tries, which is what most people do. Yeah. And I'm a big believer in, in that consistency. Uh, we respect consistency because it shows that somebody who, who cares about their job or their work or whatever. So if you're consistent in your follow-up, all you're doing is communicating that you are, as you said, you're communicating that you're a professional and that this is your profession and you're doing it to the best of your ability. If you only follow up a couple of times, even if I suddenly later find your email and maybe I, I call you back, um, I'm still not going to have the same regard for you. I mean, I'm going to be a little bit more suspicious of you because you haven't, you weren't that consistent. You weren't that, you know, pers uh, persistent. Yeah. So what I say, when you're in that prospecting stage and some of your listeners, I'm sure have very long mm -hmm. sales process. Sure. That is your opportunity to show that prospect who you are and how you do business. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's your time to shine. 
Because again, most people are going to fall off. Most of your competitors are going to fall off if, if it's a long sales process. If you can just really commit to this side of your business. Excellent. So we're bumping up, we just know bumping up against the end of our time, Wanda. So before we go, I would like you to tell everybody a little bit more about yourself, uh, what you do and how they can learn more about you. Okay, so um, I'm a speaker and a coach and I'm also a corporate trainer. And I've written two books, both on follow-up. Everything I do, I'm a one-trick pony. Everything I do is, help, is to help my clients improve their follow-up skills. And, um, and that's why you wrote two books, because you needed a follow-up book, right? <laughs> right. right. <laughs> yeah, that's very good. Um, so, yeah, they can reach me in my website, followupsalesstrategies.com. And um, I'm, my email is Wanda at followupsalesstrategies.com. And my number is 858-382-1952. And that's what I love. I love the guests who come on here, the people who still sort of say, here's my phone number, contact me, I will answer the phone. Instead yes. of all the people who are like, well, here is info at. <laughs> yeah, now let me tell you, the phone's the most effective tool we have and it's one that's used the least. Well, I can and that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, well, maybe you come back and talk about that next time. Uh, listen, right. Wanda, this has been fantastic. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.